Hey y'all, this is Whitney, and welcome back to another episode of Spastic Chatter. If you're new here, Spastic Chatter is a platform made to feature those in the cerebral palsy community, and I get together with individuals with CP, like myself, to have an uncensored chat, if you will, about what it's like living with this type of disability. And for this episode, I have with me Zachary Weeks, and he uh, wrote in wanting to be on episode of Spastic Chatter, so I was excited, and he is an accessibility consultant, so we will learn uh, what that is in this episode, but uh, Zachary, do you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll get on to the conversation. Sure, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Whitney, and thank you so much for having me on the show, and um, I've been... Uh, watching uh, the show from here in Edmonton, Canada, for quite some time, so it's a real honor. But as you mentioned, I'm an accessibility uh, consultant here in Alberta, um, specifically City of Edmonton, uh, dealing with uh, all things accessibility, whether it's, you know, policy or building, um, customer service, uh, how we can improve things for people with CP, but also um, the general disability community. Awesome. Um, I like. I have. I've had people with CP like all over, all over the, all over uh, the club or whatever. But I think you're. I think you're one of the one of the very first people I've had from Canada. But I'm curious, what is your um like your origin story? Like what what is your why? Why did you want to become an accessibility consultant? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess uh you know, I, I never really intended to be an accessibility consultant uh, per se. It just sort of found me organically, obviously having cerebral palsy and growing up and seeing the challenges that uh, people such as myself face and knowing that there there's an opportunity to do better. Um, for a long time, I, uh, I really didn't want to relate to the disability community. I didn't identify as uh, having a disability. So, um, you know, that isn't something that I'm so proud of right now, but uh, certainly have switched the the script in terms of, you know, realizing that maybe I'm made this way. Uh, I'm here for a reason, and that reason is to improve uh, uh, things for the next generation for years to come through my my advocacy and my work as a consultant now. That's awesome. And like, I think we all go through that journey of like accepting our disability. Like I used to use some like cringy words to describe my disability. And now I'm just like, I'm disabled. I'm disabled. I'm the, I, have a dis I have a disability. There's nothing wrong with the word disabled. Like I'd rather, I'd rather say it and like be and like show ownership of it than like, than like use some cringy terms. Like, I like I I called my I call my uh, podcast spastic chatter because I'm calling myself out before anybody can can uh can can do it for me because I I look funny when I talk like it's spastic chatter like like I'm 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 reclaiming yeah. I'm reclaiming those negative connotations of like words you know what I mean so um. Absolutely, and I, I think it's great that you're doing that. We've seen that done through other communities as well, you know, with the LGBTQ S2A plus community, the indigenous community, sort of taking back those negative connotations and adding some pride to them from our perspective and, and reclaiming them, as you say. So I think it's I think it's awesome that you're doing that and through this show spastic chatter. Yeah. Um I'm curious, like what 
to like do you reach out to people for me to do accessibility consultations or do they reach out to you like do you want to do you want to like walk us through your like whole process on how to do that sure sure so um you know prior to me sort of officially launching my my consulting services if you will i i uh i briefly mentioned that uh i've been i've been an advocate for a while for people with disabilities so i've had the great fortune to speak and work with a number of different folks as well as on a variety of different issues so when it came to launching my accessibility consulting business um it, it, it's really a matter of of it being two-way approach in that obviously i reach out to you know developers or builders or or architects or or city staff and then because of my previous experience with advocating and advising on different things through my volunteerism um and being on a variety of boards they also reach out to me and and uh ask for my opinion although some may may think that or may have the opinion that my opinion uh isn't isn't worth too much uh, but all kidding aside uh, that's usually how it works is um people are, are reaching out to me and i'm reaching out to them and i think that's what really makes uh things move the needle if you will is it needs to be back and forth and and collaborative approach or else we're not gonna um be able to have a more inclusive world awesome totally agree so what is um what is one project that you worked on that's like so that's like resonated with you that like it really stands out to you like one of your favorites you know, yeah I, mean, <laughs> I uh i'm a big hockey guy everyone in canada i'm sure you've heard where all we care about is hockey um but uh that said as i mentioned i live in edmonton alberta so we have the edmonton oilers here and uh, a few years ago um we were looking at we were constructing a new arena uh to replace our old one and uh i have the great fortune to to consult and advise on that um anything from you know wheelchair accessible to uh, seating to uh elevators braille um the whole whole gamut washrooms obviously is a big thing so tie my passion for making the world a better place in with my love for hockey and specifically the edmonton oilers uh that has to be the highlights so far that's awesome and like um obviously this is not this is something that like you had to like spend time and effort on to like ramp your to like ramp yourself up you don't like you don't like just like automatically be an accessibility consultant and like people take you serious and call you and like call you up wanting wanting to wanting to just do stuff you had to like establish yourself as like an as like an expert per se like and do you want to talk about like that journey a little bit like do you have like schooling or anything like that yeah yeah so certainly you're right i mean prior to sort of jumping into that landscape and advisory role uh i i really had to first week accept my own disability and and um to peace with that uh from there i i uh volunteered and then ended up working with uh within the nonprofit in industry um and that really provided 
a boots on the ground education uh, beyond just you know my my physical needs as a wheelchair user, um, and and again keeping that open mindedness and pan disability approach that that accessibility is so much more nowadays than just a wheelchair ramp or an elevator. You know, it, it's, you know, communication, uh, technology, it's a whole bunch of different things. So um, I, I had to build trust in the community and, and really just got my name out there. And, and really it was a matter of giving, giving and more giving until, you know, I was able to show that I'm not just here to take, right? I, I, I want to, I want to be known my legacy. I want to be known as someone who gave with his heart and worked to better the lives of those with disabilities that uh, may or may not be able to do so on their own. Um, so to answer the second part of your question, I mean, yes, yeah, certainly some education involved, um, but you know, lived experience goes a long, long way to making change. Uh, so anyone who listens to your podcast, I want to reinforce to them that, you know, just because you don't have the letters behind your name doesn't mean that you can't make change in the world and move the needle uh, to make the world a better place. Exactly. I love that. And the only reason I brought up the education part is because I have a bachelor's in rehab services. And we, we, had, we actually had to, like, as one of our products, we had to, like, go around the city and, like, consult on it because on how accessible the city is so so i mm. guess that's the only reason i brought that up but um how can uh people like contact you if they want to um inquire about your services zach zachary i don't know i keep wanting to call you zach and then like <laughs> so okay just don't call me late for dinner it's all good <laughs> it's I, funny I, uh, I answered anything. Hey, you works as well. <laughs> um, but um, so, yeah, if, if people want to get in touch, I'd, I'd love to connect, even if it isn't for, you know, accessibility consulting, uh, you know, whether it's, or it's just being a, a ear to listen or, or provide mentorship or just hang out. Uh, but they can uh, reach out to me on my website at zacharyweeks.ca and uh, you can also find me on social media where I'm very active on Twitter, Facebook, uh, threads. I guess it's called X now, not Twitter, but... Uh, really? Um, I did not know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Elon's uh, decided to change the name, so... It's no longer Twitter. It's now called X. Wow. But, uh, so, yeah. one, of my, one of my, I like to end every episode, uh, with, uh, asking my guests if they have any advice for those that are watching, like, as, like any kind of like general advice or any kind of like accessibility consultant advice. Like, do you have any advice that you want to leave, that you want to leave people with? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, we as a community, we face a lot of challenges and attitudinal barriers, which result in, you know, internalized ableism. Um, and, you know, what, what uh, I would recommend or what I would advise is, you know, don't cut yourself short. Um, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. I know I'm throwing out all these cheesy 
sayings, but like you can do almost anything you set your mind to. Yes, there's going to be challenges and bumps in the road, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to get to your destination in some way, shape, or form. And, uh, you know, it's going to take likely two or three times uh, the effort and and drive as, as our able-bodied counterparts. But, you know what, uh, so much of living with cerebral palsy, myself, I speak just for myself, but maybe you can relate is that we're we're often told throughout our lives that we won't amount, we won't amount to much, uh, and uh, you know I'm here to to tell them to shove it up their uh, so their there. butt, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm 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 very uh, candid, so I'll, I'll say it for you. Uh, um, but um, but uh. Yeah, I just I just say, uh, watch me. I'm just saying, yeah, exactly. Do it. Um, it was it was great, uh, getting to know you, Zachary, and hearing a little bit more about about you. I'm sure that like this conversation could go on and on. So if like I'm sure that in the future we could have another chat about accessibility. Um, I like to keep these kind of short and sweet so like so like like i said before this that um people's attention like people like a short and sweet episodes hold hold people's attention as opposed to like hour-long podcasts where you're just listening to people talk so i'm uh but i'm i'm down to have another chat on accessibility in the future and um if you're watching this and you want to be on an episode of spazzy chatter uh, feel free to reach out wherever you're seeing this video, or, or uh, like Zachary did, fill, filling out my my Google form. Um, uh, I yeah. So, um, check back frequently for another episode of Spastic Shatter. Thanks. Bye.